Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to create a reference line inside Go using a uh, Google Charts timelines feature because I feel like having a reference line uh, can be a very useful thing. Uh, so right now it's 11:40 a.m. So if I had a reference line on this chart, it would show that it was right here because I want to show where I am in relation to yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, so as you can see, I've so I have a pre-built timeline. I, uh, I did this beforehand. Uh, it basically just has yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It, yesterday starts at 12 a.m. and goes 12 a.m. today. Today starts 12 a.m. today, goes 12 a.m. tomorrow, 12 a.m. and then so on. So uh, basically, I set. So what I have right now is I have the HTML that loads the that allows me to uh, that loads the Google Charts library. Then I uh, load my JS file myself, the one that I'm creating down here, and then I also have a timeline in a div. A div called timeline that I'm going to be editing in, which is this. Okay, so what? And then in the JavaScript, you can see I uh, do all the typical things. I load the timeline package from Google Charts, and then I create a callback to load the draw the chart, and then I have the draw chart function. I'm creating. I'm grabbed the div timeline, and I am using it to draw in, and then I make my data uh, just simple stuff. Uh, get the dates and the start and end times basically, and then uh, I add the columns. So I have so I have three columns, but you can have three or four for a timeline. You can have uh, you have the date or you have the label, uh, this, the start time, this part, and then the end time, this part, and then um, and then there's also an optional description field, uh, which we're gonna make use of in a second, but I'm, I didn't add it yet, just in case y'all hadn't seen that before. And then I add the, my data rows, uh, so I have the label yesterday, and I add yesterday start time and today because yesterday ends when today starts. Today, uh, it starts when today starts and ends when tomorrow starts, and then tomorrow. Starts when tomorrow starts and ends when the day after next. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to uh, we're going to be making use of of the description field, so we need to add that column. So we add the column between um, uh, oh, got to spell that right. So we add the column between the title uh, row uh, the row title and the start and end times. Uh, so we are gonna it's gonna be a string and we it's gonna be called description or label or whatever it, it can be whatever uh, and you might already have this so if you do then great you're already set okay now uh, so now we're gonna need a function right to basically oh so we're gonna need a piece of data actually to uh, oh actually this won't compile right now so if I run it right now if nothing's gonna compile it's because these actually need need labels now and I don't actually want them to have labels I because their uh, their row label already explains what they are well enough. Oh, this needs to be you need to put ID here. Okay. So so now you can see that it runs and we they don't have descriptions but they could have descriptions. Okay. So now we need to add a now line. So as the first object, you're gonna want to add a uh, called now, and then it will say now, and it will start uh now right now. So new date. And it will also end right now, so new date. Uh, new, new date just returns the time of right now. So if we run this, we'll see. We get a new now line, and it's right when it's supposed to be because it's about middle noon, and then it's just now. Uh, so if you don't want this label here, you can actually set the row label to be a null terminator string, and that will get rid of it. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so now ideally what we do want this is this bar to extend all the way down, right? Okay. So what we're gonna do is create a function to do that. So let's let's do that. So we want to have a function, and I'm gonna call it function now line because I uh, I think it's gonna be a now line, and it's gonna take in a div, and the div is gonna be the name of the object that uh that is the that holds the timeline. So uh so if I call this, I'm gonna call it now, and then the, up here it's called timeline, so I'm gonna call it now timeline, or now line, and then I'm gonna pass it in timeline as the as the variable. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is we want to get the height of the now line so we can figure out how high tall it's supposed to be. So var height, and that's going to be, uh, we're not going to initialize it at first. Okay, so to do this, we're going to use jQuery to use, uh, to select, so we're selecting uh, div, so that means we're selecting the timeline, so we're selecting the whole box that it's in, and then we're selecting rect. Uh, so that and that's uh, each rectangle inside of the timeline is called a rect. Um, 
and that's just how uh, the timeline feature works that the timeline library does it okay so for each of these uh, we're gonna want to take it index so for each of these we're gonna take it and we're gonna calculate the, or get the var x so float or parse float so so we're getting its position on the page parse float and this uh, dot attribute x var y equals parse float this dot attribute y okay so basically we uh, get x and y and we're gonna parse uh, we're gonna figure out how tall each rect is so if there's an x uh, so if the rectangle is at zero zero uh, then the height uh, so the height height equals parse float this oh, oops and we're gonna get um, the attribute and we're getting height so basically what this does is it finds the rectangle that corresponds to the entire thing and gets the height of it okay so this gets the height so now that we have the height what we need to do so I'll put this here get the height of the uh, timeline div and that's how tall we want to draw the now line okay so next what we want to do is we want to get the word next to it so we're gonna get the now word uh, this won't really work well if oh, this needs to be a function okay this won't really work well if um if the, this word is used multiple places so it's best to keep this word like something that you won't use anywhere else okay so uh, I'm gonna call it the now word because that's what it is so var now word and I'm gonna use the, the jQuery selector to get um, the rectangle so I'm getting the, the object that um, is has text that contains now so basically uh, yeah so that'll select the word no uh, the, they're the Dom object that is now um, okay so and you can set the CSS uh, if you want uh, dot CSS and you could say like font size um, like 11 pixels or 20 32 pixels or whatever uh, but I'm not going to uh, I just need to select it to get it and then so now we get that and we note that the previous object uh, previous Dom element the, <laughs> okay so the parents previous Dom element uh, has has uh, is hierarchical and its first element is going to be this rectangle right here so we're gonna get that so previous uh, now we're dot previous dot first okay and then we're gonna set its height equal to height and then the height that we calculated pixels and then we're also gonna set its width to one pixel because we don't want it to be very wide we just want it to be a line that's because it's a reference line and we're gonna set its Y to be zero because it's what we want to start at the top of the page uh, and um, and that's because canvas the element draws from zero starting at the top okay so now we're gonna run this okay and nothing happens that makes sense because we haven't actually called now line so after we draw the chart we want to call now line so now line and we're gonna pass it in timeline because that's what our time it's called so let's try that oh so we actually need to surround these in oops I always do this so surround these okay so now we see that we have we get a line okay but we have one problem left so uh, the event uh, so the event handlers um, Or, yeah the the handlers for this actually refresh every time the chart is uh, moused over or moused out of to display um, like relevant um, tooltips so whenever you do it it refreshes it and it's and it goes back to being small so what we need to do is we need to add event listeners so that every time it's redrawn like that it actually just uh, 
it the our implementation basically redraws itself. So we're gonna add an event listener. Uh, so we say Google events or Google visualizations events add listener, and we're gonna add the listener to our chart, and we're gonna do the first one is gonna be on mouse over, and uh, what that passes us uh, whenever it calls this handler. So we're creating a handler now. So whenever it calls the handler, it passes an object, uh, and the object is actually the row that. Uh, it's the, yeah, okay. So if the, um, okay. So if the row that we that we have moused over, so uh, if the row we have moused over equals zero, so since it's zero indexing, this is the zero row. So zero, one, two, three. So zero. If the row is zero, then we want to get rid of the tooltip uh, because we don't need it. Uh, you know, this is an optional step. You don't really need to get rid of the tooltip, but yeah, uh, I think you should. Or, I mean, I don't think it's useful personally. So, so we're gonna say uh, dot Google. It's called Google Visualization Tooltip, and we're just gonna set a CSS to null or to display none because I don't want to see it. Display, and we're gonna say none. So, and then after that, we're gonna call now line on the timeline. Okay, now we need one more event or one more uh, listener. So Google dot visualization dot events dot add listener chart on mouse out, and we're gonna say function object. Okay, so now we're just gonna call and so on the mouse out we don't need to hide anything, so we're just gonna call. Timeline, now line on the timeline again. Okay, let's try. Uh, oh, I'm 